It's been raining a lot in our garden this summer, and we're starting to see the adverse effects of it. There's a lot of diseases showing up on vegetables and flowers, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what to do if you see diseases in your garden. First of all, before we even get into the different types of diseases out there and their controls, let me talk about some prevention tips for you. The first one would be crop rotation. If you're growing vegetables, for example, you don't want to grow the same family of vegetables in the same place for three or four years in a row. You want to rotate them around with different families so the disease spores don't overwinter in that soil and will be there for that plant the next year. That will help prevent some of the diseases. Another thing you can do is intercropping. That means you're planting a variety of different plants in each one of the beds. Maybe some flowers, some herbs, some vegetables. What that does is it mixes it up so that the disease organism doesn't take over from in the bed and so you're less likely to get diseases taking, up, uh, taking out all those kinds of plants that you have growing there. And also, of course, you want to have some nice spacing, too, so that plants will dry out between the rains. That will help so that there's less moisture in the soil and less disease, especially fungal disease. That being said, let's talk about some diseases. Uh, there's one we see right now in our garden, that is wilt. And this is a disease that happens a lot of times when we do have a lot of rain, and it actually saturates the soil so that some of the roots of our vining crops, like winter squash, they'll just die. And when that happens, with those dead roots, the plant can't take up enough moisture to keep those leaves hydrated. It sounds kind of odd after all the rain, but it just doesn't have enough water. So the thing to do in this case is, of course, uh, you can maybe snip off a couple of those errant vines or if it's a stem of a flower you can snip that off um, that's one way to kind of help combat it give the plant a little less area to support and you can remove the mulch and cultivate around there so it dries out a little bit that's about all you can really do now other diseases that you're going to find will be the blights these are leaf spot diseases and mostly people will see these on tomatoes now with tomatoes you can see what we did here we pruned up all the lower leaves on our tomato plants so that you don't get that water splashing soil up onto those leaves and starting the disease but even with that because we've had so much rain we still have some blight diseases on our tomatoes but that's okay our tomatoes are growing really well and we'll get a lot of fruit anyway so that would be one of the prevention techniques is to prune up the, the foliage, put some hay or straw mulch underneath them, and that will help slow it down. You can also grow them in a straw bale like I've done here, and you can see the difference in the tomato. This one has beautiful foliage up and down the plant with very little disease on it. Another disease that you'll see often this time of year is powdery mildew, and you'll see this on all kinds of plants. You'll see it on lilacs, on birch trees, on phlox and bee balm and basil and all kinds of different plants. This is a fungus that's just naturally there, and if you have the right conditions, you can get a lot of it, which can cause some problems. Of course, if you just have it here and there, one of the best things to do is to grow resistant varieties. Grow resistant varieties of phlox like David, or bee balm like Marshall's Delight, or if you have downy mildew, like Amzel, basil is a nice resistant variety. That's a good first line of defense. After that, you can use some sprays. There are some new organic sprays on the market like Serenade, which is a fungicide, uh, but it is actually a bacteria that kills the fungus. Kind of a cool idea. It is a preventive spray, so you want to spray that on the healthy foliage before the disease gets going. You can also try an old home remedy called baking soda. Now, baking soda is a mixture you can make using this recipe. One tablespoon of baking soda, half teaspoon of horticultural oil, half teaspoon of a liquid soap, and a gallon of water. And again, just like Serenade, you want to spray it on the foliage before the disease gets going, and that will help prevent it. So some of these things are the things you could do to help prevent the disease. Others are things you can do to maybe mitigate them a little bit once they get started. And hopefully, the sun will be shining and you won't have to worry about it for too long.